driving. And you found it to be all right. So what can't nobody do us like Jesus. We know we're not just saying that. It's not just words. And I said, well, I haven't seen him. But we can feel it, can't we? We can't see the wind, but we can feel it. We honor God today. We honor his son, Jesus. We honor the pastor and his absence, Bishop Walter A. Jones, Jr. We certainly honor the honoree. Amen. Amen. Raymond Ross, Jr. Amen. And Ms. Ross. I'm Ms. Ross. Evangelist Ross. Evangelist Beverly Ross. Looks like all the ministers are about to be smiling out. Just raise your hand. You don't want to leave me with you. All right, Evangelist Kingston. Minister Freeman. Minister Ellen Morris. Minister Bernie Walker, yes. Minister is uh, AC Green, AC Carter, AC Green from I thought we were saying right. Minister Carter. Nobody ever went from us. Now they'll leave that out. I miss it back. Okay, thank God for the deacons and for all officers in your respective places. I'm going to thank the Lord for this allowing us to be here today. Amen. And thank the Lord for this occasion. Thank the Lord, Sister uh, Minister Freeman, asking me to speak Amen. this occasion. Thank the Lord now for, I want to say, let's make a word. I know she's not the honoree, but man, she's raw, fairly raw. And I was, I was watching her as she was picking them up. Put them down. Amen. And Amen. I was just wondering, are you as old as you say you are? <laughs> She's dancing and sliding out of bed, just Amen. smooth, Amen. looking young, acting young. I, I say that in jest, but I, because I do I have admiration for Amen. 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 She's a, one of the pillars of the church. Amen. She was here when I was just a young, young, young boy. I've always admired her and staff of the years. We, we know we knew it was Cousin Beverly. That's all we called her growing up, Cousin Beverly. Amen. Thank the Lord for, for her. And thank the Lord for the two members here from Baptized Pentecostal. Amen. My daughter and sister Captain Hill. Amen. My wife is working today. Amen. She would have been here. She's working at work. Thank the Lord for all of the Star Trek families here today. Yes. Thank the Lord for this wonderful occasion, a pre-anniversary service for yes. Bishop Ross. We were conversing in the study. The Lord always prepare you for, we say, such a time as this. Yes. And he was commuting to Columbia, Kentucky for 11 years. Yes. I Recently, we've been meeting in one hour and 20 minutes, but his, his drive was two hours one way. Amen. Four hour round trip for 11 years. 11 years. It took, took fortitude. It took perseverance. When the weather is sunny, when the weather is inclement, icy, snow, just going, not complaining. It took a lot to do that. Yes. And I said to him, as, you know, sometimes we wonder, we look back and things like that. And he said, I said, I wonder, yeah, but you said, you, I wonder how I did that. No, no. You know, the time, I'm sure the time went, it seemed like 11 years. But, but God just knows how to do and what to do. Yes. Yes. And he was preparing him for the pastorship of this church. Yes. The word, word says, Faithful of a few things, I don't have to rule with many. God knows how to prepare us for different jobs. He knows who to prepare. Thank the Lord for not only 11 years at Columbia, Kentucky, but for soon to be 20 years 
at this in this church. Praise God. Twenty years. Amen. You know, I, I've done so many anniversaries in the church I came out of. I always say that twenty years of dealing with people. Amen. <laughs> twenty years Amen. dealing with people. Amen. And I always like to use this, the particular scripture in the Lord. Moses, he got so aggravated with the children of Israel. Yes. The Lord would bless them. They would just praise him and praise him and praise him. And then they go back out to their mess. Yes. All right. All right. They complain. Yes. They complain. Yes. And they were a chosen generation. Yes. And they yet they complain. Yes. Moses got so aggravated. The Lord told him to speak to the rock. He hit the rock. Yes. Oh, because dealing with our people right. just fixed, and I would say we're human first. Right, 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 right. And we're not divine. Amen. Amen. We're human only. Amen. So the one is human and divine. That's Jesus. Amen. Amen. God is Father. So it's, it takes a lot. It takes dedication, Amen. perseverance. I know there was times when he felt like I uh, just can't make it. And then even through the loss of his wife, he still continued. Amen. Because he knew, he knows that God has a job for him to do. Amen. God has a job for us to do. We, we yes. might not feel like going, but we got to go. That's right. That's right. That's right. Thank the Lord for his dedication and perseverance in his pre anniversary service. Amen. Well, I was given a theme. We do want to have more prayers. Father, in the name of Jesus, come to you, thank you for this opportunity to declare your word. Lord, I don't have any power to do anything, but you sit high and with the power of the whole world in your hand. We'll help you to say what you want me to say, yeah. no more yeah. or no less. Yeah. David yeah. said, that word by hitting my heart, I want not sin against thee. Yes, so help us, O oh God, to hide the word in our heart. Yeah. We sure don't want to sin against your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Theme that's given is there's so much more worth fighting for. I call your attention to First Corinthians, the ninth, the second verse, second chapter, the ninth verse. First Corinthians two and nine. want to adhere to the theme, to the subject. The theme is that's so much more worth fighting for. Now scripture, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. That's seven because we four stated there's so much more we're fighting for. We want to deal with that subject matter first. Things worth fighting for. All right. We live in a world where people are fighting for what they believe. We have LGBT, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans transgender. And they add the Q for queer. So it encompasses all parts of how man is so messed up yes. in this world today. And they're calling right, wrong, uh -huh. Wrong, right? Yeah. They even have churches. Gay churches. Yeah. Gay pastors. Yeah. Gay couples. Yeah. And they're fighting for what they believe in. They, yeah. they feel okay. They say it's okay. Because they want to be, they say, inclusive. God didn't like that. God speaks against that. And he 
Amen. And there's no way you can make that right. That's right. Fighting for civil rights. Amen. We thank God for those pioneers that went forward. Dr. King, Rosa Parks. So that we could have a better place to live. We're no longer under segregation. Right. No longer under Jim Crow laws. Amen. And I think I, well, I know I'm fortunate that we didn't have to live through that. Amen. Because we wonder how we would have behaved when we couldn't have the same opportunities that the other folk had. Amen. Separate water fountains. Right. We had to go in the back door. Yes. Right at the back of the bus. You know, I always wonder, we've come such a long way, and we should thank the Lord because we've got the conveniences of our home. We don't have uh, washboards, we've got automatic washers. I don't know where I'm going with this, that is just that one thing. And we've got all these conveniences, yet we are so far from God. How is it that the, the, the older saints back in the day had to walk to church? And they were full of spirit. And would come to church walking in snow and rain. We got cars, SUVs, trucks. And we cannot come to God's house. There's a problem. And things are not getting better, they're getting worse. Farther and farther yes. away from yes, God. Yes. It's hard to understand. Yes. We should be the most thankful, yes. the most grateful yes. people on the face of the earth yes. from where God has brought us from. Yes. Women's rights, mm -hmm. fighting for those, the NRA, National Rifle Association, right to have guns. Mm -hmm. you know they're a powerful organization. Even prisoners have rights. Animal rights. Sometimes folks treat animals better than they do. <laughs> Don't mess with their dogs. Don't mess with their, their cat them. They will hurt you. They say, that's a member of the family. <laughs> well, I have to tell a story myself. I was so much younger then, and not knowing a whole lot of how folk would love to have. And you know, I always, we always had an outside dog, so you know, it just he fed what was whatever was left over. We didn't have a, that much, so we a, a dog was not a member of the family, that's for sure. Cooper barely getting back, he was doing more than us. I was at the bank. A woman came over crying. I, I was, she was just fooling around. I was like, what's wrong? Keep in mind, I was young, you know, a whole lot. And she said, my dog died. I kind of snickered because she was so upset. But boy, did I learn from that. You do not snicker when an animal dies. No. They said it's part of family. I learned after that. But Paul said, I learned by experience. I learned. I learned. Athletes fight to be world champions. We have the NCAA, basketball, World Series, baseball. Everybody's striving to be the champion of the world. Super Bowl. Football, the Kentucky Derby. Mm -hmm. Men and women risk their lives fighting physically in the Navy, the Army, Air Force, Marines, so we can be safe in America. Right. Firefighters, policemen, police women fight so we can be safe. Do we fight for what we believe in? You don't have to answer this. It's a question. It's a thought question. When we have an opportunity to witness to others, should we take that opportunity to fight for the one who 
laid and died for us on Calvary's cruel cross. Do we fight for him? Do we stand up for him? Something about it. We in the past a Bible study for a week before last, one of the members was saying that their manager, every meeting they had, they would curse using God's name in vain. And every he said every meeting. And he said that him being a child of God, that he pulled the manager aside and told him that that was really bothering him. And I commended him for doing that because that's what we should do. You know, we should have some backbone. When we hear things like that, God stood up for us, Jesus died for us. Why can we stand up for him? Why can we fight for him? That what you're doing is wrong, it's offensive, and it's just wrong. So we should take a stand. When we have the opportunity to do so. Somebody's fighting over a man. Somebody's fighting over a woman. It's not worth killing someone. But don't do it, something. They'll say, if I can't have it, nobody has it. And they will blow you away. That's the kind of world we're living in. There's so much more we're fighting for. First Corinthians 9, 25, Paul says, and everyone who competes for the prize is temperate in all things. And they do it to obtain a perishable crown. But we do it for an imperishable crown. What Paul was saying here is when they're racing in all these things, I talked about just a few minutes ago, trying to go for the world championship, they're doing it for a trophy, for a crown. Right. We, as saints of God, we're doing it for an imperishable crown. Yeah. Something's gonna last. Something beyond this veil. Yeah. Something's gonna last. Yeah. This, all this, this is gonna perish. Yes, sir. Our material things, so we can't get caught up in the material things, because yeah. they're gonna perish. Yeah. We're all going away from here. We can't take anything with us. So why was the folks get so proud and puffed up when the Lord blesses them with, with this and that? A nice car, a nice home. Folks get so proud and puffed up. We don't have anything we can bring anything in this world. We certainly can't take anything out. We don't have anything to be proud about. What we should be proud about to say thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We should be grateful. Next week is, is one day set aside for Thanksgiving, but every day is Thanksgiving. Every day we see you, we should say, Thank you, Lord, for waking up today. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a week. Yes, sir. 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 Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Jesus. We wish God to go out. Yes, sir. How would I say, we're not running this with uncertainty in this fight as one beat the air. That's right, that's right. We're not just beat the air. We take uh, boxers in the ring. They, they're trying to beat each other. Yeah. They're not just beating the air, swinging to beat the air. They're trying to hit. So, so we should be with us. We should be, we're fighting in spiritual battle. Yes. We are fighting against things we cannot see, wrestling not against flesh and blood, but against powers, against principalities, against rules of the dark of this world, yeah. spiritual wickedness, yeah. the first Corinthians say, in high places. Uh -huh. We fight fighting against things we cannot see, which makes it even more difficult. That's why we have to lean and depend on Jesus for everything that we have. 1 Timothy 6 and 21 says, Fight the good fight of faith. Yeah. Uh -huh. right. Lay hold on eternal life to which you are called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Okay, Let's turn to Acts 13. Acts 
13th chapter. You're talking about a fighter. Paul was a fighter. He helped the blood stand back up to the Lord. Acts 13, 42nd verse. So when the Jews went out of the synagogue, the Gentiles begged that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now when the congregation had broken up, many of the Jews and devout proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city came together to hear the word of God. So Paul's preaching the word to the Jews and the Gentiles. 45th verse. But when the Jews saw the multitudes, they were filled with envy and contradicting and blaspheming. They opposed the things spoken by Paul. Satan's always want to mess up. When he hear God's word, he wants to divide the people. He wants to say that what they're teaching is not right. It's what they're saying here. On one occasion, they got so angry with Paul and Silas, they said, these men teach customs not lawful for us to receive. They beat him, put him in chains, and put him in prison. But what I thought about Paul was, no matter how much he preached, no matter how much they went against him, he stood his ground. He kept on fighting because he said, this man that I serve, has been too good to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Once I found him, this is what Paul was saying, once I found him, he's worth fighting for. Right. He didn't back down to any back. 46. Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, but since you rejected and judged yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, Behold, we turn to the Gentiles. We said a few minutes ago, Mr. Doe, the Jews were a chosen generation, a chosen yeah. people. The Jews rejected yeah. what Paul and Silas, was, Paul and Barnes were saying. So Paul said, we'll give it to somebody that wants to hear the word of God. Someone is hungry for the word of God. So they gave it to the Gentiles. We are the Gentiles. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Jews were a chosen generation, but we were grafted in. Yeah. Aren't you glad to be grafted in? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. That God thought about us. He had chosen the Jews and said, there's another generation out there that wants this also. So we are adopted into the royal family. Yes, yes. We're heirs with God and joint with Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. Somebody said, I'm a royal child. Yes, Adopted in the royal family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So he gave it to the Gentiles. 47. For so the Lord has commanded us, I have set you as a light to the Gentiles, that you should be for salvation to the ends of the earth. 48. Now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord, and as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Mm -hmm. The Gentiles believed. Yeah. This was new to them. Yeah. The Jews were getting it all along. Yeah. That's why I say a lot of times, sometimes folk that are born to the church, they get comfortable uh -huh. and get smug. All right. We can't, we can't afford to do that yet. But then you have that trumpet uh -huh. of that drug dealer uh -huh. that comes in and says, I'm tired of yeah. the yeah. 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 And they come in right. and they're on fire yeah. with God. Uh -huh. And sometimes they surpass yeah. the ones who've been in church yeah. all their lives. Yeah. 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 They're waiting 